we're going to be using the uh, probably using a 10 inch knife today instead of the uh, six that we used last time all right you can see the knives get progressively larger in size and we're going from a six to a 10 to a 12 and uh, over here we've actually got a 14 inch knife all right now we're only going to be using the 14 inch knife for our, for our butt joints all right the, the butt joint does not have a tapered edge it's a flat end of the board when you put a piece of tape on there it makes a little hump in the drywall all right I can run my hand across, I go up a little and I come down. I'm going right over the tape. On the tapered joint, which is why they call it a tapered joint, the board has, it gets thinner on the ends. Um, so when you put two pieces of tapered board together, two edges of the tapered board together, it creates a little in, a little in between the two sheets of drywall. So when you put the tape in, the tape actually recesses, recesses back into the board a little bit. All right, which is a good thing because then all you got to do is cover the recess into the board and uh, the mud fills in the recess with the tape and it just goes away. So your, your joints don't have to be as wide. They're going to end up being about 10 inches wide. All right. Whereas your butt joint, you know, grab this 14 inch knife down here. With the butt joint, from the center of the joint where the two pieces of board came together, you're going to be taking your 14 inch knife. Eventually, as, as with the knives get larger, we're going to start with an 8 and a 10 and a 12. But by the time we're done, we're going to be wiping out 14 inches on this side of the joint, moving over to the other side of the center of the two pieces, and we're going to be wiping on another 14 inches of mud. So we're going to have 14 and 14 from center to center, all right? Which is going to create a, a mud joint that's going to be 28 inches wide just to cover that little piece of two inch tape so that you cannot detect it. All right, that'll make more sense when we're, when we're actually doing it here, but that's why butt joints are so uh, difficult to finish because they have to end up being between 24 and 28 inches wide to hide the tape. Whereas the tapered joints will probably finish up a tapered joint with no more than a 12 inch knife. All right, and we'll be able to take that right down the middle. And we're going to be filling in the tapered edge of the board, all right? So tapered edges are innies, butt joints are outies, all right? And when something's outward, it takes a lot more coats to hide it than something that's inward. And I hope that makes sense to you, but that's the, uh, that's the logic be uh, behind the different size knives that we have down here, all right? We have a 6, a 10, a 12, and a 14. We also have a 14-inch mud pan. All right, and the reason for the 14-inch mud pan versus a 12 is we can get our biggest knife, the 14, to fit inside that mud pan and dig our mud out for a 14-inch swipe. All right, so uh, today we're going to be putting on that first finished coat of mud to start hiding the tape. You can still see our tape everywhere. Uh, we can still see it in the corners as well. Now in the corners, um, the biggest knife that you're going to be using is going to be a six inch blade. Tom will be able to finish everything in the corner with a six. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to do one side, not both sides, we're going to do one side with a finished coat of mud with our six inch knife hiding one side of the tape. That'll dry, and then the next coat, the next day we come back for the next coat, we'll come back and we'll do the opposite side of the corners. The reason you don't do them both the same day is because when you're wiping the mud down the corner on one side while it's wet, if you try to come over and put wet mud on the other side, you'll dig out the mud you just put on this side. All right, does that make sense? You put wet mud on this side, then try to come back and put wet mud on this side. The edge of your blade We'll go down the corner and we'll dig out the mud, the fresh new mud you just put in on the other corner. So you do one side, let it dry, and then you come back in the next coat and you finish the other side. All right? And that's the way that we're going to be doing our inside corners. Uh, and, 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 or. I did buy an inside corner mud tool. Uh, for those of you who are willing to buy it and try it, I'll show you how to use that. That, that tool actually lets you do both sides. Same day. Uh, it, uh, 
This little guy right here. Yeah, yeah, but it actually, I mean, I, but it takes a little, it takes a little trick to get used to using. I'll show you how to use it. All right. Uh, in case you want to purchase that tool, then speed the process up a little bit. All right. Uh, and this is called the inside corner tool, and you can see it's got basically two six-inch knives bent right there in the center. One big blade, I guess, bent on a ninety, so that when you go down inside the corner with this tool this will permit you to do both of them at the same time and finish your corners a lot inside corners a lot faster so we're going to try this uh, I've, I've used them in the past they're a little trickier to use um, but uh, like anything with drywall finishing there's a technique there's a technique to how you hold your knives work your knives and this is just something else that you're going to have to learn how to use if you even want to attempt this. Um, we're going to try it today and film it and see how it goes. Now what Tom's doing right now, he's going around with a six inch knife. It doesn't matter, you can use a ten, whatever. Uh, he's going around and he's knocking off anything that's loose. Yeah. Alright, he's just going around and he's rubbing his knife down each joint and he's getting in the corners and he's just knocking off anything that we're going to call them burrs, all right? Any little burrs that are on there, uh, little pieces of drywall compound that dried a little bit high. Same, yeah. Paying special attention to the bottoms of your drywall. That's where everybody uh, uh, makes a mistake. When they get down to the bottom, they leave a lot of mud down there. They leave it on extra heavy. So I'm just knocking off the burrs here, cleaning up uh, even these burrs on the walls. Even our nail holes, when you put your mud on wet, some of them even stick out a little bit. So I'm just flattening everything. Just, uh, yeah, hit your entire wall. Any, uh, any edges on this can come off. And he'll come down the edge of all of his joints with that six inch and he'll scrape off anything that's loose, all of his screw nail holes. Um, and he'll go around the entire basement, just like he's gonna go around when he finishes today. He's gonna go around every joint, Every nail hole, every every inside corner, every piece of corner bead, and he's going to yeah. knock off anything that is rough. And there shouldn't be much because we pulled all the mud off earlier in the video. When we put on the taping coat and the corner, uh, our, our first coat on our corner bead, we pulled off all the excess mud, as you recall. And the reason we did that is so today, instead of taking three hours to go around here and knock off the uh, burrs. Um, it'll take them about 15 or 20 minutes. All right, so this is, even though we're not putting any mud on, what he's doing right now is drywall finishing. All right, this is all part of it. Um, coming in between coats and prepping your, your joints and your bead, your inside corners, butt joints, uh, taper joints. Prepping everything for the next coat. Yeah, especially on the metal where you on these edges, especially on them, you got all kinds of garbage. I don't know if you can see it flying off as I'm going down here. You just rub it up and down, up and down, up and down, just on the bead. Just on the very and the bead, remember, it's corner bead, but the bead is just a little rolled edge on the very outside corner of the 90. Alright, that's where all the stuff collects. So he's running his knife down that bead. And then, once he gets the bead clean, he'll go back to the edge of his joint, of his uh, last coat, and he'll, he'll file that edge down and knock off anything that's between the drywall paper and the edge of his, uh, edge of his knife. All right, he'll knock them off as well. In the inside corners, you want to be careful, you know, you get, like, like I said, up in the very, very corner, you can see it's just a little gray in the corner there, about a half inch of gray there. Uh, that's still a little wet, so you want to keep your knife out of that corner up there. You don't want to drag that mud out of there. Alright, clean the whole way down the floor on all your joints. Yeah, get your joints out of your floor. You don't want to be dragging any new garbage in these, when these final coats. Uh, and you can see what we're trying to do is keep all our garbage out of the mud. The, the, the cleaner and smoother we put these coats on, the better. But also keep in mind, this is just the first of three finishing coats that we're putting on. So if you do have a little scratch or a little burr, uh, don't sweat it because uh, the next coat you're actually going to do the same thing. Clean up your area, get any rough burrs off, and it's just going to fill and feather out further. 
The last coat, we're going to do the same thing. Check it all the last coat. We may actually go around with a uh, sanding sponge to, uh, to uh, clean off the edges. Before we put the final, Before final we put the final coat on. And then that one there, yeah, we call that our glass coat. We'll mix up some nice, pretty mud. All right. That's, you know, he called that the glass coat because the, the very last coat, it's either going to be the third or the fourth coat, depending upon how it uh, finishes out here. Uh, the glass coat is where it is as smooth as glass. Uh, it's ready to be buffed off after that the next day uh, for, for paint. You're ready for paint. So the glass coat is the one where you really have to be careful. Uh, make sure you have it put on as, as perfect as you possibly can uh, before the sanding day. So, but today is going to be our first coat, and uh, we're mostly going to be putting our mud on with a 10-inch knife today, yeah, which is going to be the thread handle one right here. Um, now, he'll only be using this on his taper joints and his, and his corner bead. He'll be using a 6-inch knife on his inside corners, and he'll probably be using a 12-inch knife today on his butt joints. Remember, the butt joints are going to take a lot more mud, so he's going to put on a much wider uh, area of mud on the four-foot butt joints than he is on the, uh, on the long taper joints. So uh, we're going to let him finish prepping up here, and uh, we're going to get set up here to mix up some 45 mud so that we can play catch up on our corn bead that we didn't hit the other day. Once we get the mud on that, we're going to whip up our purple lid mud, our mid-weight mud, real nice and creamy. And we're going to start putting on our first finish coat when we come back.